You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, famous but friendless. I'm so ronry. I'm so ronry, so ronry. So ronry and sadry are on. There's no one, just me onry, sitting on my little throne. I work very hard and make up great prans, but nobody listens, no one understands. It seems that no one takes me seriously, and I'm so ronry. A little ronery, poor little me. Some of you may recognise that as the lyrics from Team America, where they were taking the piss out of the Korean dictator. The concept of the narcissist and loneliness is an interesting one. Many people often ask, HG, are you lonely? The short answer to that is, no, I'm not. Because of my psychopathy, I actually prefer to be away from people. My narcissism requires me, of course, to draw fuel from them, but my fuel needs are not as great as that of the narcissist. The narcissist doesn't actually feel alone. The reason being, the narcissism as a self-defense mechanism rejects that. There's nothing to be gained in the narcissist sitting around thinking, I'm lonely. And indeed, many narcissists, because of their needs for fuel, have lots of people around them, because they have to have lots of people around them. They will involve themselves with family members, with friends, with associates, with colleagues, with neighbours, because all of those individuals can provide fuel. Accordingly, many narcissists have a lot of people around them. Of course, what we don't have is an emotional attachment to these people. We attach them to us, but we're not attached to them. That's why it's so easy for us to shelf people and disengage them. There is no emotional investment. There is no attachment. But the narcissist does not feel lonely for that because the narcissist doesn't recognize what it is because the majority are unaware. And those that are aware are quite happy to be dismissive in that regard. Of course, you will come across some narcissists that will plead that they are lonely. But that's just a pity play designed to manipulate the listener. As a combination of the needs of the fuel matrix and the way that the narcissism works, the narcissist simply doesn't contemplate being lonely. The narcissist, of course, is often alone. Although physically other people will be around them, they're alone for the reasons that I've just pointed out in terms of the lack of attachment. Certain narcissists have lots of friends. I'm one of them. I regard them as non-intimate secondary sources because of my awareness. And they're not friends in the sense that you have friends. They're there to be utilised for my purposes, vis-a-vis -vis the prime aims. But often, the narcissist can find themselves friendless as a consequence of their behaviour. And this is where it would appear that Harry's wife finds herself. Because according to the Scottish Daily Express and an article by Ben Borland, Harry's wife is famous but friendless. As a new TV documentary says, she's burned her bridges. It is correct that Harry's wife has no friends. She has no friends in the truest sense, because they're just appliances to her. But she has also lost the involvement with those appliances as a consequence of the way that she leaves people behind because she shifts through the different strata, as I've explained before, which is not typical of all narcissists. And the fact that she treats people badly because of the short-termism of her narcissism, which means people basically get fed up of being involved with her. The article explains a new documentary will look at Harry's wife's future after her sudden downturn in fortunes. The Channel 5 show asks, what's next after burning her bridges with the royals and losing a huge Spotify deal? The hour-long documentary charts the rise and fall of the Duchess of Sussex from her marriage to Prince Harry in 2018 that saw her enter the global A-list and eventually put them both at loggerheads with the rest of the royal family. Her celebrity status was polished by the couple's move to California in 2020, 
where they made friends with such stars as Oprah Winfrey and Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm not so sure she became friends with Gwyneth Paltrow. Even after their well-publicized falling out with Harry's wife's royal in-laws, their fame continued to rise in the United States. It wasn't to last, however. The Sussex's £18 million podcast deal with Spotify recently collapsed after just one series, while their tell-all interviews, their real-life Netflix series, and the Duke's explosive memoir, Spare, have led to a sense of overexposure on both sides of the Atlantic. This has had a profound impact on the Duchess's friendship circle, but who is in and who is out? Who can she trust to help her through this tumultuous stage of her life and career? A promo for the show features a photo of Harry's wife with her friends Abigail Spencer, Jordana Brewster and Sarah Hyland at Elle's annual Women in Television dinner in Hollywood in January 2016, six months before she met Harry on a blind date in London. Spencer, who, it, who at <clears throat> 41 is the same age as the Duchess, appeared with her in suits and was invited to the wedding at Windsor Castle, sitting with another pal, Priyanka Chopra. We were both born on the same day, hours apart, in the same year, Spencer told E.T. Harry's wife is a trusted friend and one of the most glorious people I have ever met. Positive fuel, demonstrating under control. She also appeared in the shit flick series Harry and Harry's Wife. However, other friends are reported to have been left by the wayside due to the Duchess's rapid rise to superstardom. Ross King, the L.A. correspondent, who appears as a regular on Lorraine Kelly's ITV chat show, is among the talking heads offering thoughtful analysis. He says, Harry's wife is running out of steam. Channel 5 promises that viewers will gain a deeper understanding of Harry's wife's current situation and the shifting dynamics within her circle. It offers a neutral and unbiased perspective, exploring the complex world of fame and the impact it can have on personal relationships. The fact is that Harry's wife doesn't actually have any friends. As I've explained, there are two elements to this when it comes to a narcissist. No narcissist actually has any true friends because we use them. But outwardly, many narcissists do appear to have a lot of friends because people don't realize that one of the individuals in the group is a narcissist who is using those other people. But for Harry's wife, we can see that she doesn't really have any friends. The people that she was friends with, she's left behind as a consequence of the way that her narcissism has functioned. She deems that there's no need to stay in contact with them. She effectively thinks that she's better than them, and this is because her narcissism causes her to think that way, because they don't provide what is required. She can control them by staying in a position of withdrawal. There are other people that she'll draw fuel from. Their character traits and residual benefits are not as good as the other people she believes that she's replaced them with. And thus, she keeps cycling through the friends. Cycling through friends is one of the narcissistic indicators that supports that the person may well be a narcissist. Also, keep in mind that Harry's wife, what does she actually have to offer you? Is she interesting? No. She's vacuous, focused on the material, transparent. Now, there are some people that are quite content because they're similar, and therefore there would be a pretense of friendship. But there's no substance to her. She's not going to be particularly sympathetic. She'll say the things that need to be said, but you're not going to be able to count on her if your boyfriend leaves you and you need somebody to speak to at 2am. She's too self-absorbed to be dealing with that. She simply wouldn't answer the phone. Accordingly, there's nothing of substance to draw in, and there is the repeated treatment of people whereby she pops them on the shelf, or in some instances with secondary sources, actually disengages from them, a consequence of her rise through the different strata of friendship groups. Accordingly, to suggest that she's famous but friendless is entirely accurate. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.